Ah, we've got so many memories with Apollo here at TDH. It was our first ever mod series, our first ever P1 at the Valley Run. I've even slept in mine longer than I'd like to admit. Forget TDH. We as Indians loved it so much that we bought it for 12 years straight on the same platform with no major upgrades or changes. Basically, just changes to the engine, but all of them were mainly because of emission standards. This is the latest and last iteration of the Polo in India, the 1 liter TSI. And I thought it's only right to reminisce on it one last time. Step aside Bhavneet because this is here to take the Polo's crown. I know for a fact that you're tired of watching Polo videos. And this is a breath of fresh air. And come on, it's been 12 years. Aren't you fed up with Polo's now? Move on with the times. What you're going to consider buying is this, the Hyundai i20 N-Line. This is what the Koreans have answered with when they saw the impending doom of the German hatchback. But have they hit the last nail in the coffin? Or are we going to miss this little German pocket rocket more than we think? Now, both of these performance hatchbacks aren't full-blown hotties. The GT line for the current generation or what was the current generation is essentially a 1-litre Highline automatic with some sporty badges here and there. The i20 isn't the full-blown N experience either. It's an i20 turbo with some subtle yet significant changes to the dynamics of the car solely for enhancing the driving feel. So this is basically not a battle of the hot hatches, rather a battle of which company has done best with what they have in their capacities in India. Hmm, jazzy looking car. But the problem is, you see, that might be a bit too much for, I don't know, people with taste. If you're a long-standing admirer of the Polo in general like us, your mind often overlooks the elephant in the room, which is the styling and design department. Saying that it still looks classy or neat or the cliche, it has aged gracefully, bro. Right? Wrong. We have to admit, that's our emotions getting the best of us. Truth be told, this design looks old, feels old and is old because many markets worldwide have already upgraded to the newer generation Volkswagen Polo and even that generation has gotten a facelift now. To compensate for it though, there is the sportiness induced by the sleek GT style cues. In general, this Polo now gets the GTI style bumpers front and rear, honeycomb grills all around and that's pretty much it. And when it comes to what makes this a GT TSI over a standard Polo Highline, well, it is basically the GT badges around the car and that's it. Yeah, it is pretty much impossible to argue that this is a better interior than the end line. It is basically 10 years old and it shows, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. The owner has opted for these GT Sport leather seat covers, which are very nice. You get a infotainment screen with wired Apple CarPlay. You get climate control, cruise control, a flat bottom steering wheel with few buttons for control and that's pretty much it when it comes to the Polo. However, the one thing that it has over the end line is its build quality. The end line has a, some scratchy plastics here and there but everywhere you touch over here is super nice and everything feels very well built and built like a tank. Even the thud of the door reassures you that this is a proper proper German car. Bro, the Polo just looks too old now. They've been selling that same design in India for 12 years. But this is a proper breath of fresh air. The i20 N-Line has some very specific features that only come with the N-Line. For example, you have this very similar looking grille to the i20 Turbo, but it is completely blacked out in the N-Line. You also get the N-Line badge and you get this red lip up front. Continuing the theme of red accents, the side also gets a red side skirt kind of thing and you have these n-line specific 16 inch rims and behind them you have red brake calipers move on to the back and you have a fakish diffuser but you get twin tip mufflers at the end and at least from the outside they sound very very nice but the real party trick of the i20 n-line is when you hop inside 
the regular i20's interior was levels above the Polo's and well, come into this N-Line and it basically slam dunks on the Polo GT. First of all, you have this very nice looking N-Line specific steering wheel which looks like something that has been grabbed from the proper i20N and it has these very nice looking paddle shifters and all of your media and infotainment controls are over here and it's just a very attractive looking design. You have these N-Line specific seats as well which has the checkered flag design, red stitching and red piping. That's not all. You have the N-Line logo on the gearbox as well and the gearbox has the red accents and the red stitching. And to give it that even more aggressive look, the ambient lighting is red. Overall, this interior is very nice and the subtle touches here and there really make a big difference. Now the newest gen Polo comes with a 1 litre TSI 3 cylinder engine which is a cylinder smaller than the older version and 200cc smaller than the older version but 5 bhp more than the older version that is because this is a dual overhead cam engine and the previous one was a single overhead cam engine so now this engine breathes better it revs much quicker and you get more mileage can you believe that 12 kilometers a liter easy peasy in this car the older tsi eh, maybe not but this is TDH and you want to know what happens when I put my foot down and the news is good. In theory, this should be slower than the N-Line, 110 bhp versus the N-Line's 120 bhp. Uh, this has a torque converter, the N-Line has a dual clutch transmission, but the news is the opposite. This is almost a second quicker to the sprint to 100 and it feels much much nicer the mid range is relentless this engine just loves to rev and it also has a bit more plush suspension that has been stiffened by 30 percent compared to uh, a normal i20 turbo but this is still quite plush and it's also its biggest enemy because while actually sending it the body roll is very noticeable and because this is a square chassis, it does handle itself quite well and doesn't uh, lose grip or understeer anywhere. To be honest, I do love how it feels and the party piece of this car is actually the engine man. Some angry mid-range, really really punchy engine and I mean, I don't think that N-Line can actually give you the same feel that this turbo gives you, does it? As you all would remember, I used to have a Polo GT TSI which had the 7-speed DSG transmission which was also a dual clutch transmission. But I have to say that the i20 N-Line and this is the DCT variant is nowhere near as good as the snappy DSG in the Polo GT TSI. Uh, some good things about the transmission is that first of all, I absolutely adore the way these paddles feel. But the only good thing about the paddle and how it interacts with the gearbox is the downshift part of it. On the downshift, super crisp and super responsive but on the upshift, it feels very sluggish which is kind of a disappointment. When it comes to the handling, I have to say the i20 N-Line is the best handling hatchback that has ever been sold in India and that's high praise for this car because it's going up against the likes of the Abarth Punto, Polo GD TSI, Ford Figo TDCI, etc, etc. And those are some amazing handling hatchbacks. But this thing has taken India by storm because of its amazing handling. The changes underneath are not that significant, but this just proves that the chassis of the new i20 is just that good. They've just done some basic stuff like stiffen the dampers a little bit and make it handle a little bit better with increased steering feel and making the steering a little bit heavier but these small little changes have made a world of a difference when it comes to being an enthusiast car. Some other downsides I would like to say is the engine. Well, this 1 litre turbocharged TGDI engine is not the most punchy. It has tons of turbo lag if you're not in its power band and well that is kind of a downside. Another downside that I would like to report is that the twin tip mufflers at the end, well, outside they sound very nice and throaty and grumbly, but inside it sounds pretty much like a vacuum cleaner, just like the new 1 litre TSI. So, these are a few complaints, but I mean, in a world where 
enthusiast cars are on the decline this is a very very nice car in that sense and it's a big surprise from manufacturer like hyundai to come out with such an amazing product for the enthusiast now, the other downside is the ridiculous price tag of 14 lakh rupees for a hatchback the i20 basically capitalizes on what the polo gt didn't it has distinctive looks compared to its more sober looking sibling the i20 turbo it looks more special in the interior and the exterior and since it's a hyundai the features are always there the n-line badging also attracts more hardcore enthusiasts because of the waves hyundai's proper n performance division has been doing internationally and more importantly it lives up to those expectations with its amazing driving dynamics well ladies and gentlemen it does look like it's going to be quite a sad goodbye for the polo if you're the kind of person that's looking for simplistic functionality and a punchy power combo i'd suggest you go to the volkswagen showroom and get yourself one of those really quickly before they are gone for good and i'm not so worried about the culture as well because the n line is over here to replace the polo and it's just a tune away from being a proper pocket rocket and well the amazing interior has loads of space and functionality and the handling is just amazing but if you're a millennial i'm pretty sure that you're gonna go for a bloody crossover like i have <laughs>